Maybe you're just a little bit too tall for the camera. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Fashion Design with Hannah. And if you're like me and have a special piece in your wardrobe that maybe just doesn't quite fit anymore, and you probably won't be able to fit in it anytime soon, maybe it's time to think about recreating it. Especially if there's a lot of things that you really love about that item, like this jacket for me. I've had it for many years. I usually get a lot of compliments on it because the color is just right for me. The fit is almost right for me. But as you can see, I've kind of outgrown it a little bit over the years. So I wanted to recreate it and bring you along on the journey. Recreating something doesn't have to be as difficult as you probably think it is right off the bat because you know what? You already have an entire sample right here ready to try on so you don't really have to create something from scratch and that is why the fashion industry knocks off so many things because it's a lot easier to do than making something completely from scratch so this is actually going to be part one in a three-part mini series where i go over how to recreate your favorite jacket so this is going to be part one where i go over the technical design of the jacket so that includes all the initial fitting the specking, creating the tech pack, and all of that sort of ilk. And on part two, I will be going over how to do the actual pattern pieces, the cutting out of the fabrics, and the fabric selections that you want to make. Bonus is that, yes, I do know that it is getting warmer out, but that also means the heavy and middleweight fabrics might be on sale at your local fabric store. And then for part three, I will be going over the sewing of the jacket along with the final reveal. And yes, I broke it down into three parts because some of you out there will be like, nah, nah, blah, blah, blah. I already know how to do the technical design. I just want to know how to do the sewing. So you can wait for that to eventually come out or you can still enjoy this video if you would like. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you are new here. Everyone's welcome, so go ahead and join the community. I'll be updating you on things that I know from the fashion industry, along with fashion trends and some DIYs and plenty of other things. You can hit me up on Instagram and on Facebook if you would like to be a little bit more involved and see some more behind the scenes on videos and in the fashion industry. And just know that I am not 100% a fashion expert on every little detail. And I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to jacket technical design. So for that, I decided to bring on my friend Madeline, who is a technical designer and has worked a little bit more with specking and working with the patterns for jackets. So let's head on over to Madeline. So I have my friend Madeline here to help out with my technical design points as I'm not very strong in jackets. However, she has almost four years of experience in the industry doing technical design. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about your background, Madeline? I graduated from Texas Tech uh, with a bachelor's degree in apparel design and manufacturing. So I do have some experience there already and have been working, like you said, for almost four years in the industry. Uh, I worked with Hannah doing women's wear and juniors clothing. So I know something about designing and fitting on actual adult human bodies, but now I'm working for a kids wear line. <laughs> and so I know grading and things from all different areas, which is really cool to be almost a jack of all trades when it comes to technical design. So hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions today. Are there any specific pieces of technical design advice that you would like to give for doing jacket collars or jackets in general? Always remember that you're going to be wearing things under it. So make sure that you're allowing for space because I do have a jacket that fit me years ago. And now with whatever it's working out or something my arms have gotten a little bit bigger <laughs> and i tried to wear that jacket with a sweater on the other day and that did not work at all so i always try to keep that in mind that you are going to be wearing layers under jackets usually um that's exactly what's happening with this jacket it's 
11 years old now. Um, I might have changed a little bit since then. Yeah, even within the last year, I think everyone's changed a little bit. <laughs> it might be time to update it. Yeah. <laughs> so then anything uh, like collar specific? Oops, sorry. <laughs> For just regular call outs, I would say that because a neckline, even an armhole, because you have a combination of straight and bias grains, and that bias grain is gonna make it more stretchy, that no matter what you do from the time you cut it to the time you sew, it is gonna stretch just a little bit, regardless of how hard you try for it to not to. Um, so I would say that whatever you're attaching to your neck, whether that be a neck band with a rib fabric or the collar like you're doing today, to make sure that it's at least a quarter inch smaller so that way you're not tempted to stretch out your neck as you're sewing it. Um, as far as like neck shapes go when you're doing something technically or with a pattern, just measure your neck, kind of measure where you want everything to lay. And it's a lot of trial and error, honestly, <laughs> for um, getting anything to fit right. So definitely make a muslin so I can do my trials and errors. <laughs> Always make muslin so you don't have to buy more fabric. And then for uh, the points, like how you get the notch collar to lay where you want it to for the separation, do you have any advice for that? Like, do you do a certain measurement? Do you leave that in the tech pack? Or is it really just true trial, trial and error? It really is kind of trial and error. As far as the tech pack goes, that's just getting your measuring tape, kind of measuring down where you think you want it to lay. Um, the other thing is you could actually drape it either on a dress form if you happen to have one, which most people don't. Like me. Um, <laughs> on yourself and that <laughs> I've had to do a fitting on myself before and that I had many, many pinpricks, but um, it is possible to do it on yourself. Just kind of stand in front of a mirror and pin where you think you want things to lay, whether that's the notch on your collar or with the actual fit of the body, just kind of look in the mirror, see what there is to see, <laughs> and kind of judge it from there. But it is, there are ways, but for the most part, it is trial and error. If you get it kind of made up in your muslin and figure out, hmm, I want that just a little bit lower, then you can change it then. So is there any specific grading advice or pattern specific to this jacket advice that you can give? So my advice really is since you're already customizing this, uh, as well as where you want maybe that opening on your jacket collar uh you might be able to change the princess seams on this jacket as well if you've never liked really where it hit you on the chest or in the armhole you can always reshape that curve if you don't like the way it looks or how it fits um where that same princess seam line is going to hit on your waist as far as the spacing and for grading wise you know if you can't cut this apart um because that's what i do on a lot of things that i want to grade up or recreate if you can't cut it apart then to pin each place that you think needs to be changed or widened or reduced or whatever so you can pin that smaller or you can just pin it in a place and say i need to expand this here by this many inches approximately and then again in your muslin you can trial and error that and see if you need to take some away or put some back in and really buff out the lines to make them look nicer is there anything else that you don't think is going to work out correctly as far as the jacket i'm just always nervous about doing collars because they're so tricky yeah um Maybe another piece of advice as far as collars go, I would say if you're going to change like your neck width or anything, wherever you're changing the pattern within the neck on the actual body, you need to change the same way on the collar. Does that make sense? So if you're increasing the neck width just at the back neck when you're slashing and spreading, then just increase the um, collar on the the measurement on the collar at that same point, kind of, if you know what I mean. And if you change a neck drop and change the curve a little bit, try to make it a similar curve, if not the exact same curve. Um, and how does that work with uh, the brake line in the jacket? Does it change it much at all? It might. If you change a neck drop and that notch is reliant on where your neck drop is or from where your neck drop is, then you need to keep in mind if you don't want that neck that notch to change its position then you need to then move it up however much you dropped it on the pattern for your neck drop um so so keep that in mind you've got to there's always consequences to whatever you do in a pattern <laughs> you've got to make sure that you're um 
doing what you're doing to one thing, you do to the other so that you have a consistent pattern all the way through. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Madeline, for your time. I really appreciate it. And I really hope I can do this jacket on my own. I have so too. And also feel free to ask me more questions if you ever have any. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So for the actual measurements on the jacket, there are still plenty that are the same from a basic top, such as doing the shoulder width, the chest width, all the widths are pretty much the same, minus doing a hip width, which lands about 21 inches or so down from the high point shoulder. Now, for doing the high point shoulder on a jacket, sometimes when you have a collar like this, it is easier to just unbutton, if there are buttons, to unbutton the collar and then raise it up. Now you see that there's a point right here and a point right here on the bodice. And that is how you find your high point shoulder. We'll go through the tech pack though and I'll go over the measurements and you'll notice that what's special about a jacket is that not only do you have to do the total, but you also have to do from each side. So as we come to the tech bag, you'll see that I already have a lot of these measurements filled in. However, some of these are also just text box holders so I can type in the information when we get to the specs. So I already did all the body lengths and all the regular widths. I'll show you the hip width just to show you how that will look. So we are going to go down 21 inches from our high point shoulder. Mark that, come on over here, meet up with it, and measure across. So that one is 18 and a half. 18 and a half, all right, so that's already good. So you'll see with outerwear that they might have a yoke, or in this case, an extreme forward shoulder seam. And that is usually to help keep the jacket in place, while on your shoulders, it'll look like it is sitting in the right place, you know, right in between the front and back bodice, but on the flat, it is very far forward to help with the weight of the jacket. So you'll see this shoulder seam forward. We're gonna measure that one out and see this one is about an inch and a quarter, which that is already on my tech pack, so that is awesome. Now let's see the armhole, we do the same way, sleeves we do the same way, except for you will also see on a lot of tailored jackets that there is an underarm panel. That is what that U slash A shorthand is for, is underarm. So we'll be measuring the panel widths at both the armhole and the sleeve edge since it really is a straight seam, there is no fancy curve. So for where it hits the armhole, that is going to be about one inch. And then at the sleeve edge, that is an inch and a quarter. So it only gets a little bit bigger at the end. You could make the measurements the same if you really wanted to. So you see here I have one inch at the armhole seam and one and a quarter inch at the sleeve edge. Now for doing the neck measurements, I'll show you up here. As I said before, here are our high point shoulder points and we'll just measure between there. So for the neck width, we have about seven inches, which that is kind of snug. I feel like I could make it a little bit wider, give myself a little bit more ease in wearing it. Now what some people don't realize is that the notch collar jackets still have a regular neckline. So to help you visualize that, I will peel this collar back and then show you up here. So there is our neckline. So we do still have a front neck drop. Now normally you would not ruin your high point shoulder while trying to measure it, but I was just trying to show you. So now I'm going to go relocate my high point shoulder and show you the front neck drop. And we are marking it to the edge where the front comes up and that is three inches. Now that sounds about right for me. However, once I look at it on my body, I will see if I want to change that around. And then we'll do the back neck drop when we flip it over. And note that the lining usually has a pleat or two. Usually two pleats, not just one, but 
could just be one pleat. This one has one pleat right here. It is actually being held down by the label, which I think is a little bit odd, but it has this pleat in here so that way you can have room to move your arms back and forth. You know what? I'll just put down for the neck width about seven and a quarter with closer to a quarter. And then for the back neck pleat, you can either say it's the width on half or describe it as the depth. So I think I'm just going to describe it as the depth. And if you can, because this is sewn down, oh, this is going to be tricky. There is a wear line where my pleat ends. So it looks like this pleat depth is about three quarters. So on the pattern, you are actually going to make it one and a half because the pleat is, it is actually measuring three quarters on the garment, but that is going to look like one and a half inches on the pattern because obviously to make a pleat, you're going to fold it in half. So back neck pleat depth three quarters. Now, if you had multiple pleats for the lining, you could do a placement from the center back so you can mark on your pattern where they are going to fall. This one is exactly on center backs, so it doesn't really apply for me. Now, here is the fun part where we get to add in our half measurements for all of the widths. The chest width, you're going to make sure that this stays consistently flat as much as possible. Chest width is an inch under the armhole. That is going to be at 10. Waist width, we are marking 15 inches down. So we are going to do the waist width next. That is 15 inches down for what we are doing. And that is coming in at nine and three quarters. Okay, now we will do the hip width. Again, our hip width is 21 inches down. That is about... 10 and a quarter. If you're handing this off to a factory, I would give it down to the eighth for our sakes. I'm going to do a quarter. Okay, and then sweep width. All right, so then we're going to do sweep width, and that is going to include the pocket on this one, and that is going to be on the flat straight at 11 inches. So we're just going to mark that 11 inches. Now, we don't normally mark this for factories, but for my sake, I am going to mark where the break point is because that is important <laughs> with pattern making. The break point is exactly where the collar starts to roll and then stop. So right where you see the fabric start to turn, that is your break point. I am going to mark it from the bottom edge up and that is at 18 and a half inches. So my break point might change when I start moving the measurements. So we'll see how this goes. Again, as Madeline said, this is going to be a lot of trial and error. I will definitely be doing at least one muslin, but it's a tough balance between wasting fabric and perfection. <laughs> onward to the second page because yes it's a jacket so it gets a second page Woo! as we move on to our second page you will see that we have all jacket specific specs on here i will start from the top i'm going to do the terrible thing and move this back down and we are going to do the really fun measurement of the collar at the top edge. Now this collar is rounded at the edges, so that just makes things a little bit more interesting. I am just going to choose a point that is somewhat in between and measure from there. Madeline, if you're watching this, don't cringe too hard. Uh, 17 inches. The collar point length, which is definitely not 30, so the collar point length is going to be from the next seam here out to the end of the collar. Again, this is a rounded collar, so I'm kind of making up a point. And that is going to be at five and a half inches. 
Now this collar doesn't have a center back seam, however, you can generally tell where center back is. And we are going to look at the collar width there. And that is at five and a quarter. I might add this point of measure later. All right, so I'm trying not to move the jacket too much, I promise. So I will do the facings after I am done with the outside and the back of the outside. We can move on to the princess seams and I will do the front first since we are still on the front. Just close this collar back up, put our high point shoulder back on and we'll look down here. It's gonna be six inches down from the high point shoulder for where the princess seam starts. Six inches. Then we are going to do the at hem measurement. However, this gets a little bit complicated because the pocket goes over the princess seam at the bottom and it also gets caught up underneath. So oh, we'll see what I shall do. Here's where the seam feels like it ends up. So we are going to do seven and a quarter. This could also all change with a muslin considering as how I am changing this jacket up a little bit. So go ahead and enter in seven and a quarter. Before we move on to the back measurements, we'll do the pockets as they are part of the front. So the top edge measurement, six and three quarters. And I do really like these pockets on here. I might do these exact measurements. No, it's not the pocket opening at the bottom. So it is going to be the pocket width at the hem. So the pocket width is going to be eight. And then, especially because this is a curved hem down at the bottom, we are going to do the pocket height at the center of the pocket and at the sides. So we're going to look at the center. That is going to be seven. And the sides are seven as well. Okay. So we'll go ahead and mark the seven. And then because this pocket actually covers the side seam right here, I wouldn't say to place the pocket at the side seam. I am doing the measurement from the front body edge. So from the front body edge is going to be six and a half. Now just remember that with a jacket, it overlaps at the front, or at least the double breasted style does. So instead of saying from center front, because the center front is not clear on the actual product, we are saying the front body edge. Through the front of it, we'll check and see if the bottom edge is different and then mark that if it is. That's actually seven inches. We are going to change this to where it says at top and then at hem. Go ahead and mark seven. And because this pocket top edge is very clean, it doesn't have your typical turn back with double needle top stitch to make it a little bit more commercial. This one is a little bit nicer and it has turned back into the lining and then it was sewn down. So I'm going to measure that for my own sake. You don't typically give this as a measurement. It is one inch. Okay, belt width. So the belt width is two and a quarter. So two quarter. So just because I want to keep this jacket in place, I am going to measure the tabs and the placements before I take the belt fully off. Just to know that these are chunky tabs. They usually aren't this wide. So that is an inch and a half. And while we're at it, we'll do the length. The length is three and a quarter. And just note that there's usually a third tab sitting at the center back so it doesn't droop in the back. Okay, and then the placement from the front edge is six and a half. Now also before I take the belt off and turn this over, I'm going to do the button placements. From front edge to center, we are looking at three quarters. And then from the hem up, we got 12 and a quarter. Okay, and then I added two more button placements because we have two sets of buttons here. 
we have from center to center across so it's going to be from here to here and then the second row of button placements from center to center so up from the first row and up so from center to center across we have four inches and from center to center up we have five and a half we can start the back measurements also note that if you want to do the full measurements we make it very clear that they are the full measurements to the factory you can mark the total width measurements as the back measurements because the back is only one piece so it's pretty clear that that is one piece width and the front is each side while we're on the same page of this tech pack I will do the measurements that are on this page so I'll start with the back yoke measurements for the yoke at the center we have eight and a half on the high point shoulder okay eight and a half okay and then we'll do from the armhole and that is eight and a half as well so that's nice i'm going to do the back princess seam at armhole this will be a bit tricky but just like the front princess seam we can still do it mark that zero and measure up to the high point shoulder so at the armhole seam that is seven and three quarters okay then at the hem so remember how I said the pocket covers the side seam? Well, well, that's just annoying. <laughs> so I checked it out where the seam goes, and it's practically on the top stitching of the pocket. That measurement is about five and a quarter. You know what else we could use? A button placement for the yoke. Although this button popped off years ago because, again, this is an 11 year old jacket, um, and I grew a little bit and one day it just kind of popped and I have no clue where it went But I would like to add a button onto my recreation jacket. So that is accurate So I will measure to the center of the buttonhole and up to the high point shoulder. That is seven and a half And you know what I'll mark that too at center back from high point shoulder to center all right, I think I'm good to remove the belt now. Now just note that this is angled edges, so you will do both a top measurement and a bottom measurement. Okay, that is 57 and a half for the top edge. And now on to the bottom edge measurement. That is gonna be 55 and a half. My front facing width is still right here. So now we get to expose the jacket innards. All right, so at the shoulder seam, I will change that POM. The width is an inch and a quarter. Front facing width and bottom edge, because that is a much easier measurement. I'll do that first. That is three and a half. I might try to do something easier. We'll see how this works out. So it's great that I gave myself a measurement from high point shoulder seam, but from the inside that is very hard to measure. So, so I think I'm gonna make this a little bit easier on myself and do three inches down from the neck edge and look at that width so I can get this nice curve. That's going to be five inches wide. And just note that there is sometimes a button added to the inside of the garment to help keep the overlapping edges nice and neat. All right, so now I feel pretty good about all of the measurements. Now comes the more daunting task of patterning and then making the jacket. So I will do all those other fancy button placements after I have a finalized garment that I like. Before I get into my fitting for my jacket, I just wanted to point out that Madeline made a really great point that you should be designing your jacket for whatever layer you are going to be putting it over. Because I usually just wear something thin under jackets while someone else might want to wear a sweater underneath it. So they're definitely going to have to have a lot more give, especially at the armhole. But right now I can only fit on a light jersey t-shirt underneath and still be able to fit inside of it easily. So I'm hoping to change that. I 
I do think that I love something that I can layer really easily. So for my changes, I am going to button it and not be able to move very much, but just so I can get a better idea of how this fits. So for this process, you're going to want a ruler, a tape measure, a box of pins that you're hopefully not going to knock over, and your tech bag. That way you can note what changes you want to make. But if you don't want to make a tech bag, just note it down somewhere what you'd like to change. It's a lot easier if you have a tech pack, so you have a specific point of measure written down ahead of time. But if not, that's okay. Do what you want to do. So I went ahead and buttoned my jacket. And that means that I really can't do very much <laughs> without possibly busting seams. So you can see why I don't really wear it much anymore and why I love to wear a recreation of it more often. It does still fit pretty well, but I just need some more space. So <laughs> right here at the under bust measurement, which is about an inch down, I think I'm going to want to take this out an inch and a half or so and because it is a jacket and split to two sides it's going to be three quarters for each side at the under bust for the armhole it's really high up there in my armpit which is not pretty and it makes me not able to lift this very well either so i'm probably going to drop that part mm -hmm probably about a half inch to start and then as we come on over here to the armhole shoulder seam area you're gonna want it to actually come out just a little bit further than where your shoulder bone sits this is very hard for me to do in this jacket which is why I need to adjust it uh, so I'm gonna probably want to bring this out by about a half inch so it sits out a little bit further it makes it a little bit easier to wear and put on because right now it's actually difficult for me to put on too and as we go to the back you're gonna see a design detail that I have a love-hate relationship with it makes this jacket very non-functional for me so it is a back yoke right here that overlaps over the back shoulder body piece and there's no pleat which means that this is the fixed size so while it gives it a cool kind of military utilitarian feel on the back I can't expand my shoulders forward and that is why really nice custom jackets and coats usually have a back pleat so that way it can come together and look all nice but when you actually need to reach forward for something you can do it there's an expansion there so I am going to be adding a back pleat there along with a yoke seam probably right along that area maybe a tiny bit higher than what's on my current jacket now fortunately I do love the rest of the details on this jacket like the neck width where the collar sits um, you know up here and right here and the notch distance and where the overlap and princess seams are so that makes it really easy to just be like on the pattern eh, let me scooch it this way eh, let me scooch it this way and not have to worry about like oh where does this seam hit now that I have expanded it do I do this or this and then had to draw out so many lines and so many different muslins it can get exhausting especially the neck work and that is why I have such an issue with collars <laughs> the other thing is that these pockets sit a tiny bit higher than what I like they are pretty deep which is awesome but they can be a little bit awkward to get into so either a I might scoop this pocket opening or I might just reduce the pocket opening haven't decided yet, but you guys will see when I do the patterning part two of the mini series. And that'll be it for part one of the technical design for recreating my jacket because I don't have too many big changes to make. So I will list those right here for what I did for now. But you know, 
I might change them a little bit later on. I'll let you know though in part two since I obviously have to finalize it in order to make the pattern. So thank you all for watching and as always take care and I'll be seeing you here in the next video. Bye! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shake too hard, I get cockatoo face. Exactly. So.